tricky wind going on out there. And you were out on the playing field itself this morning. You know how tricky it was. It is. It's very, very tricky. It's a lot of fun, though. It makes it a really interesting game, especially in the set play format, where a gust of wind can suddenly change the, the fortunes of either archer, and it really makes it interesting to watch. And we saw that in the mixed team match with the United States, and uh, Katuna Lorig missing a shot, which is very uncharacteristic of her. Of course, it was uncharacteristic of Rio Wild and Sandrine Van Dionat yesterday, and uh, Cheng Ming, who also missed a shot today. Well, a single miss in a tournament at this caliber is pretty surprising to have four. That's really telling about the strength of the wind and the unexpected directions that it's coming from. Men's bronze medal match, Jean-Charles Valeron of France, 10 and four this season, and facing his competitor from China, Zhang Jianping, for the first time ever. And there you see his French teammates in the crowd cheering him on as Mr. Zhang takes to the field of battle here in Medellin, Colombia. Zhang Jianping, 6-2 winner over Zhuang Wudong, then lost to Dai Zhaozhong 6-2 in a match that was closer than the final score might indicate. He's 24 years old, ranked 44th in the world. And there you see some of the other vital statistics for Mr. Right. Zhang. And if you look at that average score in matches of nine and a quarter points per arrow, that's a, a very, very good uh, arrow to average per arrow score. That'll serve him very, very well. It'll be interesting to see if he can continue that in this sort of wind and these weather conditions. So all set to go. Last two matches of the day coming up. The men's bronze and the men's gold medal matches and Mr. <laughs> Zhang, a little bit off target, but everybody's been around seven or eight with their first shot. Yeah, most of them have, and a lot of them, the majority I would say have been out left. There's <laughs> Now Jean Charles. The exception that proves the rule. <laughs> Jean Charles Valadon, who upset Gail Prevost 6-2 before dropping a heartbreaking semifinal match with Jeff Hankels and a shoot-off, both shooting nines, but Jeff Hankels had the better shot than Jean Charles Valadon, who just saw Mr. Zhang post a 10. Nice. With, with a nine, so now he's got a two-point lead in this set. Uh, it's pretty a comfortable position to be in on a normal day. On a day like today, it's not nearly as uh, safe as it would be. Neither of these two archers has been out here yet so far today. They haven't had the advantage of competing in the team competition and getting a feel for the conditions. Possibly not, but there's a lot of conversation going back and forth. Uh, I had a conversation earlier with Jean-Charles uh, about where we were aiming in the practice field versus what was happening on the main field. Uh, as, and in addition to that, there are, World Archery has done a really good job of providing screens for the archers over in the practice area so they can see what's happening. And if they're paying attention or if they have a, a good team staff, they'll be able to know roughly where most people's first arrows are going and, and they'll have at least a bit of a better guess where they should either aim or set up their sight on the practice range to come over and, and come out. But the key word you just mentioned is guess. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's one of the really big challenges of the way these finals are working these days. Uh, this year in particular has created just some really interesting matches in terms of the scores and the ability level of these archers is absolutely fantastic. It's just top notch and the scores, in some sense, I, I get the idea that people watching may or may not be able to really understand how good these shooters are because they're you know you're, they're shooting a six or something but the to shoot you've, a nine under these conditions yeah though. yeah un until you've been here and done that these guys are shooting just terrific arrows and shooting from 70 meters away <laughs> outstanding shooting by both Zhang Jinping and Jean-Charles Valadon Valadon taking the first set scoring 29 points as he sandwiched two tens around at nine, and there's a bullseye for Mr. Zhang. Yep, Mr. Zhang has found the middle, and now we have a real game going on. And that's sometimes a good strategy as well. You never know, it's possible that uh, the Chinese archer used his first arrow, uh, in the industry term, is as a windsock, mm -hmm. just to find out what the wind was doing. 
and after that he'll know how to aim off for that strength of wind and he can gauge more accurately what he needs to do to just keep pounding tens and, and take the victory out of this. So Apparently he's received the information he needed. Absolutely. <laughs> so this second set will go to Zhang. No matter what Jean-Charles Valadon does, and he does finish off the set strong, but it's not enough. And Zhang Jianping will take the second set, and we're tied at two apiece right now. Of course, we're coming off what had been the best match of the day, Ines Stepanova coming from behind to beat Miranda Leek 7-3 to in what I thought was an excellent match. Oh, that was a fantastic match to watch, for sure. Miranda's such a good shooter. She's been around for a number of years. She was on the U.S. Olympic team last year and uh, really laid it down in the first couple of sets. And, and then along came Inna Stepanova and, and took it right back. It's, it's an exciting match to watch. They all are. I, one of the great things about set play is that it gives you that opportunity. Um, another great example of the set play really working to an archer's advantage was in the, the first, the bronze medal match of the women, where even two sets down, uh, Anna Maria Rendon had an opportunity. She was still completely she was still in the game. Yeah. Tied at two. Zhang Jianping of China goes first. And a nine. Up, yep, shaping up to be a great match. Interesting that Zhang's arrows are mostly low, and if I remember correctly, most of Valadon's arrows are a little bit high. <laughs> That's perfect. That, an X will do every time, yep. 24 years old, ranked 47th, Jean-Charles Valadon. Takes a one-point lead in the set. And there's another X. Yep. Both of these guys want to win this medal. This is a terrific match. It's a shootout. Sounds like a silly thing to say. Both of these guys win them, want to win the medal. Of course they do. But they are really coming out to play. Both have brought their A game. Let's put it that way. For sure. Mr. Zhang with a one-point lead, and he's going to take this set as well. Yep. It is now a two-point lead. He just salted the set away with that bullseye. So regardless of what Jean-Charles does, and well, he almost splits the arrow. How frustrating is that to shoot that well and you still lose the set? I don't think it's all that frustrating because he knows he's shooting well. He just has to... You just have to wait for the law of averages to pay, pay off, and he'll start winning sets as well. If you're shooting arrows that are grouped that well, and sometimes you shoot great sets or great matches, and you get beat, right? There's, there's a difference between losing and getting beaten by an archer who outshoots you, and, and there's never any shame in losing to an archer who's outshot you. Very evenly matched, Zhang Jianping and Jean-Charles Valadon. China versus France here in the men's bronze medal match in Medellin, Colombia, stage three of the Archery World Cup. Hope you're enjoying our live streaming coverage from South America. First time for world archery to come south of the equator. I uh, don't believe we're south of the equator here. This. How close are we to it then? I think we're quite close, but I think we're just a little yeah. bit on the north side. Just so. on the north side? Yeah. I'm going to Google that and find out. But I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. Oh, there's a little breeze. You can see a stabilizer blowing around a little bit. And just again. off to the left. And now with a four-point lead, two arrows to go. Again, ordinarily you'd feel, feel safe, but you can see the wind in his hair. You can see the flag in the distance. And you can see a stabilizer pushing around. <laughs> that was a big break. I still got a two-point lead. Sort of effectively, if you look at the seven over the five. Sure. But in his mind, you know, he would like to have taken more advantage of that, especially yeah. since he just shot that shot. And we're down to a one-point yep. lead, yep. So that five may not cost him all that much, depending upon what Jean Charles does right here. Looks like we're in a bit of a lull. Can he take an advantage of it? Oh. Now it's picking Holding up again. Holding long. Quatre. Oh, dear me. Trois. Deux. Oh, oh my goodness. And you could hear his coach counting it down. So a seven. I think he just tightened up a little bit there. Trying too hard to win. This could be for the win. Nine to win it. Looked like a good shot. Eight Ooh. to tie. Splits the set five to three. 
And here we go again. <laughs> Zheng Jinping had a chance to put it away with that shot. And he was just about an inch away from doing it, Hugh. Oh, for sure. Yep. But that's tough, that, that inch at that distance. Two centimeters from, what is it, 7,000 centimeters away? <laughs> an inch or a millimeter, good as a mile sometimes. 5-3 the score. Once the scores are on the paper, it doesn't matter what they look like in the target. So an excellent match going on between these two gentlemen in the bronze medal match. Good luck at Sandrine Van Dionon. <laughs> so with a, a breath of relief, let's see what John, John Charles does in the, to open up this final regulation set. Hopefully he'll take good advantage. I love shoot-offs, as you know. Absolutely. And that's what Jean-Charles has to be hoping for right now. That's his best option. Yeah. That's a pretty good option right there. That's an excellent way to start it out, for sure. If I had my choice, that's what I would do. Nine low. And Only one just point. millimeters outside the 10 ring. Yeah, bien tiré. Very nice. Not, not, a single arrow, not a single of John Charles' arrows is below the center line on that target, which is just an interesting, I find it interesting. My goodness, 10-10 and you've got a one point lead. It's not over yet. Not this set at least. Comfortable nine, wow. Critical shot, critical so, shot. 10 to win. It's tricky. He, he needs, it's an interesting position that Jang is in currently. He can relax. He knows he's got a shoot off at least. So he go to the shoot off. Going to a shoot off. Yeah. He shoots the nine, loses the set by one. So they split the points. One point goes to Zhang. He's got six. Another uh, point goes to. No, I believe both points will go to Jean Charles. Oh, you're right. Excuse me. I was doing my math in my head, and I should have taken my shoes off and counted. There we go. It's five to five, so we have a shoot off. I hope this comes down to quality of shooting and not an unfortunate gust of wind. And again, it's closest to the center. Doesn't necessarily have to be a bullseye. It's a whoever is closest to the center. So Jean-Charles Valadon, 24 years old, ranked 47th in the world, picked up a team bronze medal at stage one in Shanghai this year. Won the World Archery Field Championships in Val d'Isère last year. And performed well three years ago here in Medellin at a world ranking tournament. Now has a chance to pick up the bronze medal, but it all comes down to one shot, and they will change the target faces, as is the custom. Well, and that's so that if they do come to a measure, they have a nice, clean face that they put up just perfectly, and they can measure to the single arrow that's in it. No other target holes, no other tears. No wrinkles from... When you're pulling arrows out, you actually stretch the target, move it a little bit, because you place one hand against the target face to pull that second arrow out. So any of those wrinkles could potentially change its millimeters at times, the difference between a winning arrow and a either continued tie or a loss arrow. So here's Mr. Zhang, who won a team medal in Antalya at stage two this year. Oh, that didn't look like a good shot. He got a nine out of it. Yeah, I think he'll take that. So Jean Charles knows exactly what he has to do right here. To wrap this up. And he oh, doesn't do it. Gonna be close. I don't believe so. That's the Chinese archer all the way, I think. You think so? They're shaking hands, so it's so a clear victory for right. somebody. Yep. Jean Charles has accepted his fate. Zhang Jianping, apparently the winner. Apparently closer to the center of the target. We don't have to wait for the judge's decision, I suppose. And Zhang Jinping with his coach sharing some of the credit right there. Well, and why not? Uh, you know, the coach plays an actually fairly important role in these set in these alternating arrow set play because you have 20 seconds to shoot an arrow. 
And in wind like this, you heard John Charles coach counting him down. Mm -hmm. That 20 seconds can go by very, very quickly. In a regular tournament, you have four minutes to shoot six arrows, which is 40 seconds per arrow. But you have the whole four minute block to work with. Mm -hmm. So if there's a little bit of a gust, you can just wait it out. In these matches, you, you can't wait anything out. It's your 20 seconds starts, and that's the time you get. That's the time you have to work with. So they both shoot a nine, but Zhang's is closer to the center of the target, and Zhang Jianping of China.